Yo, what up, what up, what up? This is Cody Manson, Charles Manson's illegitimate grandson, and you are tuned in to the It's Just Music podcast with Sicko ENT, Tripe Life for No Life. Eee. Out for your boy, just give me five minutes. I'll be in and out sick, they won't see me no witness. I'm a stick up kid, regret some things I did. Can't be kind hearted, it's just a life we live. I had a friend one time, and we'd always ride rhymes. Got a demon in a mind, we committing a crime. So I started doing work, got me watching the house. When the father goes to work, she got a dick in the mouth. So the neighbor look at go, we got one hell of a target. We're going inside once he leaves the apartment. Just grab all that you can, got the burner in your hand. I destroyed the house, took the plate in the couch. We got everything in a big brown bag. Don't you ever say a word, or I'll leave your toe tag. What? Vito Banks told me, yeah, don't think he a phony We split 30 grand, he took the Cubic Zirconi Now everybody wonder how your boy coming up I got that underground sound, got the bombs in the truck Got the pounds, got the diamonds in my ring That's what's up, I go and see my mother Leave the money in the counter I love you, that's what's giving me a good life Sorry, I don't do What up, y'all? This is Mike P from Zug Island Yo, it's just music Love my boy LB Forever Forever Yo, it's just music, bitch It's Lil Busy, a.k.a. Lil Busy TV, man Yo, this is Hurricane What's up? This is MC Lars You're watching It's Just Music with Sicko ENT Hi, it's Scarlett It's just music with Sicko ENT Yo, what up? It's T-Lo What's up? You're listening to the best radio station in the planet The best podcast in the planet Y'all know who y'all rocking with, man It's Just Music with Sick ENT, my nigga SickoENT.com This is Nick Gibbs from the 316 And you're watching It's Just Music with Sicko ENT Hey, this is Shay for the Dark Lord What's up? I'm Six Digit You're watching It's Just Music on a Signature Series Network Yo, this is my and You're watching This Is Just Music with Sicko EMT Hope you have a good time, enjoy it If you don't enjoy it, we'll probably run it through and bust your ass You know, whatever I forgot what the fuck else I was supposed to say. Toledo, that's the holy grail. Me and money like Oprah, Gail. You get a verse, you get a verse, hell. Everybody get a verse under your chair. Gonna pick it up, I just put it right there. Catch me outside, Dr. Phil. The meds don't kill you, the doctor will. How about that when I hop out real? They're screaming, oh no, no, Mr. Phil. It's just a life we live. It's just a life we live. All right, sicko. Zuka here. Time to cut the bullshit. It's time for It's Just Music with LB Sickney. Now I know something technical is going to go wrong during this video. Just about every episode has a fuck up. And if you can catch it, write it down in the comments. Enjoy the show. Woo woo! What up, y'all? LB Sickney making another video for my sickos. And today I got a pretty dope show for you, you know what I'm saying? The fuck are you going? I got Cody Manson on the show. He just did a dope show tonight with uh, the Dead Guy podcast. By the time you guys seen this, that show was like a month ago. He did a good job and shit. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Talk about some other shit. Play some music. You know, let's go. His first track, Cody Manson, Sulphur. Check it out. Henny Honky, please drop that shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, look. They say they love you, but they hate you at the same time. Hearts are meant to be broken, but I won't let you break mine. Pedal to the metal, straight jazz, cut the brake lines. Bitch, quit playing on my line, I don't waste time. White girl sniffing, white girl to get a facelift. Politicking with the demons in my basement. She slit her wrist and show it off like it's a bracelet. I'm chill to put it with a mask on, no Jason. Just a styrofoam cup, this ain't no beer mug. No, I ain't sipping lean, I'm sipping weird mud. Mix the Red Bull with the beer blood. And take it to the body, I don't feel much. They steady talking shit, but turn around and copy me. But they bitches wanna fuck me, that's why they got blocking me. When I'm on the road, they always say they missing me. But they don't really love me, they in love with my toxicity. They in love with my toxicity. They in love with my dark side. They don't wanna see me smile, they'd rather see me grin. You dig? No, they don't really love me. No, no, they just fell in love with my demons. No, they don't give a fuck about me, about me. No, they just wanna fuck with my demons. No, she don't really love me. No, no, she just fell in love with my demons. No, she don't give a fuck about me, about me. No, she just wanna fuck all my demons. All my demons come equipped with silver tongues. A simple, simple whisper in her ear. 
will surely make her come Don't try to play me stupid If I catch you with another one Then it's gon' be a crime of passion I'ma get it back in blood Yeah, Don't get murdered over jealousy Nah, no. I feel like everybody envy me I make them feel alive That's why they feeding for my energy Got bitches eating bitches Eating bitches human centipede I got bitches eating bitches Eating bitches human centipede it's that gang shit. You don't know nothing about that. Look, no, they don't really love me. No, no, they just fell in love with my demons. No, they don't give a fuck about me. About me. No, they just wanna fuck with my demons. No, she don't really love me. No, no, she just fell in love with my demons. No, she don't give a fuck about me. About me. She just wanna fuck on my demons. I'm pretty sure that just blew my speakers on my computer. Let's get into some of this interview. <laughs> what was that like being in the same room with Hobson for the first time in what, 10 years? Yeah, well, that, that wasn't the first, like, convert. That wasn't the first time, because, like, um... Wasn't it the first public one? Yeah, 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 first public one for sure. But he, he had hit me up. Um, we had a, a phone conversation and then we met in person at, at Whole we were at a Whole Foods and just chopped it up. Um, so that wasn't the first time I actually saw him. That was the, it's the last time I saw him. Um, you know, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it was, I mean, it was, it is a little, little frustrating. Um, but like, you know, we got at something closer to what the truth was in that, you know, at least I got him to acknowledge that I didn't steal anything. Um, you know, that's ultimately what I appreciated him saying. I didn't appreciate him not promoting it afterwards. And that's why we haven't spoke to this day. Um, Cause he said that, you know, I just feel like if you're going to disrespect somebody you know, and then apologize, then you should be able to apologize just as loud as you disrespected them. Right, uh, like you're, right. Yo, what's happening, y'all? These wishbone both of us are motherfucking army, and it's just music. What up, dog? I'm LB Sickening, CEO of Sickle Entertainment, man. Welcome to It's Just Music. Go ahead and introduce yourself for the people that don't know who you are. What up? This is Cody Manson, Charles Manson's illegitimate grandson, <laughs> a.k.a. a whole bunch of other aliases, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Yeah, I like that. I just watched the interview you did with the dead guy. Uh, shout out to the dead guy, man. I like that interview. You know what I mean? Good job. You spoke on a lot of really... Uh, I mean, a lot, a lot of it was uh, negativity, but a lot of it was truth, so... I, I definitely got to say good job on that. Yeah, I got to I gotta speak my truth, you know? Right, dude. You know, uh, drama's part of the game, unfortunately. Just on this show, I try to stay away from it. That's <laughs> do your thing. Right, man. What first What first got you into music? Um, The Backstreet Boys. Backstreet's back, all right. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Dead ass serious. I've said this before, so... um. This sounds maybe this makes me sound super old. The first CD I ever got, my mom got me was a Backstreet Boys CD. You know what I'm saying? Um, and the reason I say that, like I've heard other music before that, but uh, she also eventually got me this VHS tape that was a double tape. And one of them was the building and the setup before this big concert they did, and the other tape was the actual concert. And that's what made me want to be a live performer like that, like beyond doing music like that's like i would be lying if I said when I was like six years old and I seen that video of them performing with a crowd screaming. That was the thing that made me want to be a performer. Yeah. Uh, I and, then Eminem, and then Eminem came out and fucked all that shit up for me. <laughs> I, I can't lie, man. I was I was into some boy bands. You know what I'm saying? I can't I can't lie at all. Uh, I remember my mom walking into me and I'm like. 
fucking doing this dance to 98 degrees for this girl and shit. Fucking I'm practicing it because I'm going to do it for school and shit. Hey, I got a girlfriend for like three months off of that shit. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> but no, like my first, my first, uh, the first music I ever bought though was a uh, uh, MC Hammer cassette tape. And I think it was a Great Malenko cassette tape. Uh, I used to live in Michigan when I was younger and we got it from a rummage sale across the street. But uh, that can't touch it. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. That was the first like piece of music I ever bought. Classic, classic shit, man. So who inspired you to make your own music? Um, the thing that inspired me to want to write music was Bone Thugs and Harmony. I'm glad um, you said that. Me too. Ace 99 and Eternal. I remember that was the first shit I heard because I couldn't understand everything they're saying that made me want to like go back and listen and try. That's the first thing that ever made my brain try to comprehend lyricism. Yeah, that's what that's what I find fun about hip hop. Is sometimes I can't understand it, and so I have to go write. You know, I have to go look up the lyrics. How I taught myself how to write raps is I would write the lyrics out. You know, I'm old enough to where I don't. I didn't have the internet when I was a kid and shit, so I'd have to play it, write it down, play it, write it down bar for bar, and learn the learn the song. That's how I learned how to write. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. What's up? Nice to meet you. My name is MC Lars, and I just made an album with Shape of the Dark Lord. Oh, hi. My name is Shape of the Dark Lord, and I just made an album with MC Lars. Read on your Wikipedia that you are the that you are the inventor of a certain kind of hip hop, Lars. So you want to speak about that? <laughs> Is it lit hop? Is that what it says? Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's just the idea of like writing songs about literature. And um, there's this Canadian guy, Bob Brinkman, who's popularized it too. Um, this kind of when we wrote this Disney record, we approached it like. I think like a lit hop project where like you take a Shakespeare play and you make it the story about yourself, you know, but about rap and like all the stories on this album are like Disney Disney stories that resonate with us. We're really kind of telling our own story. So like this is a way in a way it's like a lit hop record, I, I, I guess you could say. Um, Literary rap, but rap's always been literary because it has words, you know. The mansion to this very day. And if you listen closely, you might hear her talking about Dalmatians. What the? Is this the right play, Shaper? Hanging from the ceiling, that's how Gracie's been feeling. We'll find a way out, I'm hoping for sure. Hanging from the ceiling, that's how Gracie's been feeling. We'll find a way out, I'm hoping for sure. Cody Manson, this song's called Purge. Let's get into it. I'm a freak without that leash. I'm a snatch. 
your ass up Stuff you straight in that trunk Dump that bitch off, I'ma slap off No witnesses, I'm a problem to society I'm killing all these wannabe bitches Heaven's gaze seems so nice From a distance, trapped from existence Devil on my shoulder, Lord, never been my witness Try to capture all my minions Angels laughed at my opinions Long live the king, shabby plastic from all existence My heart ache, my face numb I'm emotionless, hung in a crucifix Out on these streets, stay reckless Chain gang clicks off my necklace Mask off, I can't have no witnesses On this straight ain't nothing but bitches Try life purge shit, I'm on a fucking mission, bitch Get the fuck up on my face You ain't gonna get me. You ain't gonna get me. You ain't gonna get me. No, you're not. You're not gonna get me. Let's get into this interview. You're not gonna get me. No, you're not. You're not. Sicko. With Sicko EMT. Yo, this is my sicko. You are watching this is just music with Sicko EMT. Whoop whoop. Whoop whoop. Do you know whoop whoop? The definition of that W H O O P. We help our own people. You know what juggalo means? Just use God's guidance to love ourselves. That's dope, man. I never heard that one. That's dope, man. I got the same shit on me, though. That's dope. Yeah, you, you, you got you got to love yourself or you can love anybody else, my friend. Exactly, man. Straight up. And ninja, that means you're never in no jam alone. Fresh friendship remains eternal. Stop hating. We corny as fuck in this bitch. <laughs> you already know, though. You already know. We're checking out Mind Cell today. So, like, as always, let's get into this first track, man. He's got Bizarre on this song. Let's check it out. What's up, man? It's your boy Bizarre from D12, man. Giving a shout out to my man Mind Cell, man. Mind Cell. Big shout out to you, man. It's your boy Bizarre, man. Have a blessed day. Weirdo. 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 This Freemason do that, I don't know, man, a long time ago. This was like probably over 10 years ago. He was like, all these people want to, you know, sell their souls for fame and this and that. He was like, they don't understand that fame. Check this out. If one person knows who you are, just one fucking person, if they know who you are, you're famous. I mean, it sounds stupid, but if you think about it long enough, man, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you might not, the whole world might not know who the fuck you are. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, the whole world knows who fucking. one person you are. Exactly, man. That's fame. Man, I swear I'm about to lose it. I gave my life to music. The devil told me fight with you. Be another has been. Don't you want to make a move? Do it. 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 How'd you learn how to write? Um, who actually taught me how to structure music was my brother, my oldest brother, Matt, and uh, my homie Buttermilk, which was his, it was my oldest brother's friend, but they would be up there listening to beats, writing raps. And I was like, wait, you can actually do that? You know what I'm saying? They're like, yeah, bro. This is, and like, they're the ones who taught me how to structure a 16 bar verse and like what a hook is and like even rap, what rapping on beat was, what a punchline meant. Like, right. You know, as far as like showing me like bars and, and and everything you just described, that was definitely true style. Shout out to True, man. I haven't talked to him in like 10 years. How do you describe the music that you typically create on a daily basis? Uh, how do I describe it? Uh, fucking obnoxious. Um, real. There's a lot of... Uh, it's inspired by a lot of personal shit I go through, whether it's a hype song or like a sad song. Like it's all... It's all, you know, mine from somewhere in my spirit of some shit that I'm going through. I like how you have on, well, I, don't, I don't really want to know if I want to state it as I like it. Uh, I find it interesting how you have on your bio on Instagram, hated by the most hated band in the world. Why did you choose to do that? Just a troll back, you know, because, uh, I mean, my bad, you can, you can cut that part. Um, but no, I'm not trying to get back into the negative shit, but no, just uh, 
with the most hated band in the world fucking hates me. You know what I'm saying? And for whatever reasons, but that's what it is. Um, I like like you were talking on the Dead Guys podcast about how a lot of artists put themselves in a box. So I did like I've been doing like ICP shows, you know what I'm saying? I've been doing anything that I got offered, you know what I mean? Which any artist that's coming up should do. Now, to speak on why artists are waiting for this handout is because like like I said, like this culture it's beautiful, but it's ugly. And what I mean by that is like, it's, it's kind of like, it, it's beautiful that you can find um, inspiration and find like a hero and an idol amongst such a culture. But it's also ugly because it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, some of these artists, like they don't look outside of that to they think that's what the biggest thing is. Now, I'm not saying that if you achieve that, that it's not a big thing. But like, look at like a Tech Nine, or look at like a Hopson or a Jelly Roll. These are people that did their thing, was Juggalos in the Juggalo culture, but also didn't sit here and scream the word Juggalo and they just push themselves, and they never put themselves in that box to be politicized. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't mm-hmm. know if that's a fucking word. I might have just made that word up, but it made sense. You heard it here first. Now you good, homie. Um, but you know what I'm saying? So it's like when you put yourself in that box. Yeah, like you're gonna have to sit there and wait for your handout. And guess what? It's probably not gonna come. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So with me, like I did a bunch of ICP shows. Like I can't say the only thing I can say like was ever because uh, like they've never offered me anything. Mm-hmm. Like they never reached out to me and asked me to do the gathering. I just like everybody else filled out my little email and sent it in, and they chose me, which is cool. But did they hit me up like, hey, you want to be on the gathering this year? No, they didn't. You know what I'm saying? So. So t- you want to talk a little more about that? You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you describe what you mean by that? Um, what I mean by that is like, sometimes your idols grow up to break your heart. Uh, sometimes your idols grow up. Like there might be someone like, you know, like think about the Eminem stand song. You know, he's talking about like, yo, we waited in the blister and cold for four hours. You just said no. There might be a situation where like, you know, you, you might, you might have this idea like this is the one artist I want to hear my shit and you might get in front of them and they might fucking make you feel disrespected or some shit so we're like as an artist what I mean by that is like don't put yourself in a box to where you're just limiting yourself to this one idea of what success is or who's going to help you be successful or who you want to even be signed to like you know what I'm saying like I'm not by all means not telling you to not dream to not you know work towards this certain idea but like don't get so caught up in that one idea that you miss, you know, your life, you know, your career. Like, you know, how many people do you think grew up, you know, speaking on the juggalo shit? How many people do you think started rapping with the dream to be on psychopathic records? Like, you know, it's like that's some facts. people. I'm, you know? I'm, that's facts. And I'm definitely one of them. Um, thankfully, I was blessed and Violet J has done things for me. Um he put me on the gong show. He gave me a nine. If you really watch the video, his original score was an eight. I explained that on the interview with uh, Corporal Robinson. If you go back and watch that episode, I agreed with a lot of the things that you said on on the Dead Guy show about this. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, I I, I know for a fact that Vala J, uh, I don't know. I want to say appreciates what I do, but like I said in, in a private message between you and I. Uh, I don't know how true it is. There's a few people that have told me that he's intimidated by what I do. That's kind of why nothing else has ever happened after that. Uh, I don't know how true that statement is. It's just I've heard that from a few people that he's associated with. Uh, as far as put, putting yourself in a box, that's definitely true. I've seen a lot of artists do that. And I think that, you know, uh, watching the Juggalo community all these years, I think that that's why I'm not afraid to work with people like you or Corporal Robinson or the dude that was in Dark Lotus. I'm not afraid to interview you guys. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm also not afraid to make songs with you guys. I'm not afraid to work with Psychopathic and Magic Ninja Entertainment. And if I get blackballed for it or if I get shunned in the community, which I pretty much already am, I don't give a fuck. Uh, This is my dream. These are my goals. Uh, You know what I mean? And I just want to say that I respect the shit out of you for saying that. Uh, you had over 100 people in that live, and that was that was bold of you to state how you really feel. 
I mean, I mean, that's all I can do, bro. Like, uh, like I said in that interview, I bite. My, I've been told to bite my tongue for so long. But it's like, I'm a grown ass man, and this is my life, and ain't no one else's life, bro. And it's like, um, yes, I've quote unquote been blackballed, but have I really though? Because like, I'm still doing shit. I still got motion. So the reason why I have motion though is because I didn't just put myself into one box, you know, like. You, you, like putting yourself in that box is what makes it even able for you to get completely drowned out. Like how many artists have been in a situation like I'm in, but then like completely like just fell all the way off and like they just quit doing music. So like I can name many. a few, I'm not going to, but I've seen it a lot. You know what I mean? So many. Um, uh, I've been watching you for a while, man. I've been trying to get you on the show for at least a year. You know what I mean? Uh, you've been on tour and shit, too busy and shit. Um, I'm glad that you're okay. Uh, after that accident and shit, um, yeah, yeah, that was pretty scary, man. You know, um, yeah, it was. <laughs> I bet. Uh, I've been in an accident, man. I, I, next time I see you in person, I'll show you my leg. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. That shit is terrifying, bro. It should change your life. Yeah, it, it definitely did. It definitely did. I was into sports and all kind of shit. Once that shit happened, uh, nope, I got into hip hop, doing drugs. That's what happened. You know wow. I mean? <laughs> right, right, you know. My name is Jess Marie. Shout out to your loud boy. Yeah, that's nice. Hey, it's just music. We're with Sick O.E.N.T., baby. Yeah. Oh, it's your loud boy, and you're watching It's Just Music with Sick O.E.N.T. Bang, Ooh, bang. Ooh. Or are you telling am I kidding myself? I lay in my bed and I'm punching and kicking for bidding Your presence felt crippled from lies My mental health got me feeling not I write it all down with a pen and some paper With hopes at a time it helps someone be greater You can learn from my mistakes and be better than me Live my life, my life is I'ma miss you, bro uh, I want to thank everybody that gave me a drop I want to thank everybody for letting me record them and being on the show And like I said, anybody that was a part of this benefit, man you want to be on the show, hit me up, you know what I'm saying? Had some legendary people on here, and I'm just gonna keep going with the show. I don't give a shit if people like it or not. What's Go good? What's good? It's your boy Gene Sloco, aka 100. Had to make a special appearance for my boy Yo Loud Boy. Benefit, you know what I'm saying? Trying to help the cause for my people. Anyways, yo, that's what it is. We're getting down tonight up here at the venue 18. Yeah, Sicko yeah. Entertainment 2023. Boy, it is 2024. Yeah, and we coming. We yeah, coming. yeah. Sicko ENT, baby. All right, for sure. They hit my line, I'm like, do you need assistance? If I leave a witness, they coming up missing I'm not the friendly type, so please keep your distance Smoking on a strong, I get high like Blake Griffin I'm calling the place, like my name Lane Kiffin Hit it from the back, cause we don't do no kissing Hell nah, I ain't breaking bread if you ain't pitching Got some shooters from the D, just like the Pistons uh, all my cousins on some crip shit And if you're bloodin', turn your lips into lipstick Don't talk slick if you don't know your lip, bitch Proper preparation prevents poor performance Throw some killers out in Charlotte that'll sting you like a hornet Cut your balls off with the forceps, leave your body at the doorstep Everybody's fucked and they ain't have intercourse yet If head was a car, girl, then give me that Porsche neck Stop sending shots if you ain't ready for the war yet Cause if it don't make more money, it makes more debt my Jeez, train to go to lay you down in your bed This pressure getting to me, I think I need some more Head the drugs ain't enough, homie, and that's a big bet This for all the money that I ain't even get yet On the way to the back, I hope I don't misstep I'm a big fish, so you're gonna need a big net they hit my line, I'm like, do you need assistance? If I leave a witness, they coming up missing I'm not the friendly type, so please keep your distance Smoking on the strong, I get high like Blake Griffin I'm calling the place, like my name Lane Kiffin Hit it from the back, cause we don't do no kissing Hell nah, I ain't breaking bread if you ain't pitching Got some shooters from the D, just like the Pistons 
Uh, all my friends bang seven four, and that's till the motherfucking world blow. Uh, I got that raw, not that been around the world coke. Have you looking crazy? Yeah, my name is Earl Doe, crazier than cuckoo. Yes, I am the doo doo, the bag of chips, the soda. Uh, even the soup too. One phone call, that's all it takes to shoot you. I don't need that power, cause it's just gonna confuse you. I got the biggest heart, and people mistake my kindness. Like I gotta remind them why they call me your highness. Every song I create is motherfucking timeless. So when I'm dead and gone, y'all better rewind this. They hit my line, I'm like, do you need assistance? If I leave a witness, they coming up missing. I'm not the friendly type, so please keep your distance. Smoking on the strong, I get high like Blake Griffin. I'm calling the place, like my name Lane Kiffin. Hit it from the back, cause we don't do no kissing. Hell nah, I ain't breaking bread if you ain't pitching. Got some shooters from the D, just like the Pistons. Hey, this is uh, Yo Loud Boy's mother. Uh, I am watching this with Pickle TV. I want you to please stay. And I'm very glad my son was very well alone. Thank you. And go Yo Loud Boy. I like this song. This song's dope. This song's been out for about a year now, you know what I'm saying? He put this out around the last time I checked him out. You know what I'm saying? So I, I've heard this one. Let's check this out, man. This is called Voices. Let's go. By the way, the dog's name's uh, Winchester. Say what's up, Winchester? What's up, Winchester? And squeeze it till it's empty All these demons in my head They keep on laughing at me I'm so fed up swear this misery is never ending All these voices in my ear They make me trigger happy Put the rock on my temple And squeeze it till it's empty On the ground in a dark place I lay low like Doug Graves Black mask, black duct tape She got nice lips, I call her fuck face I eat that pussy when she on her menstrual Murder weapons inside the rental If you got beef, you better let go Put back, put one through your temple Cody Manson, you can't rebuke him You know it's him if that demon's ruthless You can't stop him even if you shoot him You can scream, but that shit is useless The devil's coming, you can hear the music Got you struggling, choking and puking Rigor mortis, corpse leaking fluid Dead bodies smell like raw sewage All these demons in my head They keep on laughing at me I'm so fed up with this misery is never ending All these voices in my ear They make me trigger happy Put the clock on my temple Then squeeze it till it's empty All these demons in my head They keep on laughing at me I'm so fed up with this misery is never ending All these voices in my ear They make me trigger happy Put the clock on my temple Then squeeze it till it's empty Am I psyched? Yo, a schizo, my only friend is a pistol They tend to call me a sicko Cause I'm addicted to nymphos Every day I swear I wake up It's the same old thing I came so far but I'm still stuck in my old ways It's not my family that makes me feel this way It's the insanity that's stuck inside my brain Ten over six, my thoughts are wicked 
Everyday struggles of a misfit All my pain is self-inflicted yeah. Can't escape the misery, I'm addicted yeah. All these demons in my head They keep on laughing at me I'm so fed up with this misery It's never ending All these voices in my ear They make me trigger happy Put the clock to my temple Then squeeze it till it's empty All these demons in my head They keep on laughing at me I'm so fed up with this misery is never ending All these voices in my ear They make me trigger happy Put the clock to my temple Then squeeze it till it's empty You know, I, you know, I gotta say, I like that sicko line. You know what I'm saying? Let's get into some more of this interview. Well, we'll... She said... She said, what do I gotta do to make you love me? What do I gotta do to make you love me too? She said, what do I gotta do to make you love me? What do I gotta do to make you love me too? She said, what do I gotta do to make you love me? What do I gotta do to make you love me too? She said, what do I gotta do to make you love me? What do I gotta do to make you love me too? She said, she's messing with the small minded little boy a quitter. He's a grown man, but really needs a baby sister. He's a fake account offender, really thinks he's happy here to every move the girl makes. She's got to ask a hip What do I gotta do to make her love me? She asks herself why she cleans the blood off her face. It's the third time this month that's got me pretty pissed off. I said that one to twist off. I bet this bitch is really soft. You a punk, you a coward. I'll fight you any time I hour. Take him to the top floor. I'll throw him off the ivory tower. Bullets flying, fire power. Tired, drunk, a happy hour. He's a coward, he's sour. Has no man power. Oh man, bitch. Prostitute strip beat him with the hockey stick. Burning with the fire breath Caught me sick A lunatic panic Which is boomstick And I don't give a fuck Cause that bitch could suck a dick Ayy really Girl don't touch me Alright About my damn food Okay 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 Alright Okay Alright Okay Alright Okay Alright Okay Alright Okay She said What do I gotta do to make you love me? What do I gotta do to make you love me too? She said, What do I gotta do to make you love me? What do I gotta do to make you love me too? She said, What do I gotta do to make you love me? What do I gotta do to make you love me too? She said, What do I gotta do to make you love me? What do I gotta do to make you love me too? She said, Who what watch my mama get hit? The first time I seen it, man, it really made me sick. I was in the deep ditches and I did 30 days. And my mama came to visit, she was wearing ugly shades. That's not like mama, cause the lady got class. I knew at that moment that a man would harass. I fell to my knees, I was hurt, it's belief. I couldn't protect her, never have I felt so weak. I'm punching and screaming, the seal, some my demon. I made a vow to my mama, won't happen again. Cause I'll beat that motherfucker and I'll make his life in. You should never hit a lady, but ladies know your place. See, he might hit your back if you get up in his face. Don't act like a man won't get hit like one If you're in a abusive relationship, please girl run I'm just saying and I'm praying that you really find peace If your boyfriend ever you hit ya, girl call the police This food is not hot like how I act You're gonna make some more Don't you know how hard I work I, I do to know. put food on our table? You know what I gotta go make some The least your ass can do Is make sure that my food is hot and ready when I get home She said, what do I gotta do to make you love me? What do I gotta do to make you love me too? She said, What do I gotta do to make you love me? What do I gotta do to make you love me too? She said, What do I gotta do to make you love me? What do I gotta do to make you love me too? She said, What do I gotta do to make you love me? What do I gotta do to make you love me too? She said, What do I gotta do to make you love me? I do my best to try to please you, and then get things right for you. But you never get it right, do you? So what's your creative process like? You smoking and drinking? Yeah. What do you gotta do to get ready? Um, I'm actually like I said, uh, I'm, I don't out here. I'm not out here flexing my lifestyle, but I'm uh, I'm coming up on five months sober of everything, bro. I don't even smoke weed no more. 
That's inspiring. Um, That's inspiring. Um, yeah, wow. and I know a lot of my music is drug fueled. Like you know, a lot of my cat like like people perceive me to be like this acid eating monster. You know what I'm saying? Like, but it's like you know, I've dabbled. You know, I've partied my ass off. But it's like really what it comes down to. It's like, has there been points in my life to where I feel like I had to smoke weed to get a good song? Not that I had to, but like I would notice I would have writer's block, but I notice I go smoke, and I'm like, oh shit, and it just comes to me. So like, um, it just kind of just depends on where I'm at in my life at that time, bro. Like, um, right now it's coming from uh, having a clear mind and like knowing more that my music is more important than just being obnoxious and wild. Like, you know, I, I got more shit to say, and I'm more I'm capable of saying a lot more than what I've been giving my fans. Like, uh, on the Love to Hate Me tour. On the first show, I, I had like this thing. I got, I didn't get like emotional, but like I got all deep between a song. And I was like, you know, I feel like I've been like ripping my fans off musically because I feel like I'm capable of so much more. And like they love what I'm doing right now. It's like, if you guys love this and like, I know you'll like really appreciate and love like what I'm really capable of. So it's like, I guess just more like um, just understanding my growth and what my voice, how powerful my voice really is, you know? I, please, please remind me how you and I cross paths. I don't remember. Do you? Honestly, I, I mean, I'm, I hate to even say this. I don't remember, bro. Like, fucking, I've, I've done so I much. Don't I don't I've done so many gatherings, bro. It's like, I'll get people all the time that's like, yo, boom, boom, boom. And it's like, then they'll send me a picture. I'm like, oh, I remember that now. You know what I'm saying? I know I've seen yeah. you at, at the past two gatherings I was at. I'm pretty sure I've seen you at a couple shows. It was probably the gathering, bro. Like, more than likely. But, uh, but the thing is, is like you knew who I was at the first gathering. You knew who so maybe, I was before maybe, I knew who you were. Maybe That's it what, was just the internet, bro. Maybe I just because like was I, it from was it from when I did uh, the the Juggalo Day on Roku TV? Um, I'm I honestly don't know. I don't watch that. Like huh? you know what I'm saying? I think huh. I think honestly, how long you been doing this podcast for a long time? About three years. I probably seen you through this because like that's one thing I do. Like I'm real like in touch with like you know the media side of it because it's a big part of the culture it's like you guys give people a platform to you know to open up like if it wasn't for shit like this like you'd only have the music right to learn the artist and it's like some shit people are saying in their music isn't actually what they're going through in real life you know or, so or who they are as a person yeah or what their what their mind says like there there's been certain artists where they really care for their music but then i might watch a podcast and i'm like i really like this dude's mind like i like where like how he thinks to where like I gain an ultimate respect just for them as a person. And then that turns me into more of a fan of their music. So um, I think it was probably because of your podcast, bro. I feel that uh, like I'm a, I'm a fan of Boozy, for example, as a, on a mainstream. I love show. Boozy, bro. Like I'm a, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't really care for most of his music, but I love his interviews. I, I, I like him for who he is. You know what I'm saying? The things he stands for and the shit he talks about. So I relate to that. That's dope, man. If you could, collaborate with anybody alive or dead give us both man give us alive and dead who would it be Ooh, i'm gonna say kevin gates alive because i just did another interview like a typed out interview and i named like five artists and I, i'd be forgetting how much of a fan of kevin gates i am um so i'd say kevin gates for sure then like passed away bro uh fuck dude um Probably like DMX, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I get that a lot. That and Tupac, you know? or Tom Petty, bro. Like, I love Tom Petty, bro. I listen to a lot of Tom Petty. Hey, man, I, I grew up on that shit too. You know what I'm saying? How old are you, bro? Thirty-three. I was so, born in 1990. Yeah, so I'm four years. I'm four years ahead of you. So, we, you know, we're on the same spectrum here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you could open up a show for any artist, who would it be? Because, you know, doing a show and collaborating is two completely different things. Kid Rock wouldn't be who he is if it wasn't for a stage show. Right. Um, fuck. Um, I think for me, like, demographic-wise, doing, like, a Suicide Boy show would be fire. But, like, to be honest with you, like, I don't have nothing against some dudes. I don't really – I'm not, like – I'm not going to – like, I have respect for them. I don't – I couldn't name you, like, three of their songs, you know? But, like, I know – Same here. They're they are, though, right. I would be fired, but like I would say, like I don't know, bro. Like a Kodak Black show would fucking probably be lit. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I don't know, some 
something crazy, bro. Uh, I've opened for Young Jeezy. That's like my favorite artist ever. I've opened for him before, so that's already off that. But I mean, an Eminem show, like I don't know, fucking, uh, or like a, even on some metal shit, bro. Like opening for like fucking Corn or like something to that nature. You know what I mean? A Limp think- Biscuit show. Personally, I think the most fun I've ever had opening for anybody was Lil Flip. That shit was fucking dope. Yeah. I'm trying to think. My my funnest opening. Uh, uh, hmm. That little flip show was at the Underground in Sandusky, Ohio. R.I.P. the Underground. Yeah. See, I think I think right now my favorite show that I've ever done was opening when I was on the Twisted Tour in Albuquerque at the Sunshine Theater, bro. That shit was fucking insane. I bet. It was sold out. It, like, the, like a lot of times theaters, they'll, they'll uh, close the top balcony. Well, the Sunshine Theater has one balcony and a, a second balcony, dude. And this whole shit, that was the only show I've ever performed where I'm looking up at the ceiling, pointing at a group of people, like, up there, make some noise. They're like, ah. Yeah, that's like kind of that, how that's kind of how Peabody's was in Cleveland. Peabody's don't exist anymore either. Did you ever go there? Oh yeah, that's uh, that was where I got my start, bro. I did. Yeah. That's I probably did over a hundred shows at Peabody. That's probably where we met, bro. That, at the beginning, probably. Yeah. yeah. So you're in Ohio. Yeah, man, I'm right on the lake. Sandusky. I, I don't like to state exactly where, but very uh, close uh, to that. Very uh, close yeah, to so that. We definitely probably met at Peabody's or something then, bro. I used, to be in a group, I used yeah. to be in a group called THC. It was me, a little short dude with, with tattoos. I hate, I hate to call him short. But he okay, THC. Short. Okay, there was a night at the Underground. Um, Who was it? He's no longer with us. He was from the Cottonmouth Kings. Um, no, uh, Leaker was, Saint Dog. Saint Dog. It was a Saint Dog are show. Talk, are you talking about it was like Saint Dog? It was D-Gaff, Chucky Chuck, and Mars? Maybe. Um, Saint... St. Dog was supposed to show up, but he ended up um, being in the hospital because he shoved some. He did some drugs, right? Yeah, no, and, he was at this. He was at the show I'm talking about. I, I met him. She kicked it with him tough. Like there was yeah. like it was kind of, it was a weekday. And it was kind of like a dead show. Like not trying to hate on it, but it was like there's probably ten people there, so they just yeah. sat there and slugged out with us the whole time. St. Dog was a real one, bro. There was well, St. Dog wasn't there that night, man. And the group THC showed up, and I just that's one of the biggest regrets I have in my music career because we partied me, me and true styles and these girls party with THC in the back. <laughs> and I was like, I was just, Oh no, I was pissed off. Cause he didn't show up because he fucking did some dope and shit. And fucking fucked up, fucked himself up, was in the hospital because of it. You know what I'm saying? Do you know about what year this week? Cause that's the group I was in was THC. But, Oh dude, it was a long time ago, but they got me on, they got me on film and I was drunk as fuck talking shit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we probably used to kick it back there, bro. For real. Fuck it, I was just talking shit. I I don't. I wish I wouldn't have did that. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, fuck, man. Um, my computer just told me I'm running out of room, but I'm sure I still got enough to finish this. What's one message you'd like to give to your fans? One of my other favorite highlights that you did is you got to have one of the members of Bone Thugs on. How was that feel for you? Because I know you're a big Bone Thugs fan. Bro, I've been, bro, like, you don't understand. I probably annoy the fuck out of Busy Bone. I, pro- I probably do. The dude gives me, like, he, he he gives me inspiration, and I've explained to him why I hit him up so much. Like, I know of, I know you see me, dog. I know you see me. And it's like, I know I know that eventually he's either going to do one or two things. He's going to tell me to fuck the fuck off, or he's going to work with me, dog. You know? And I, I hope as he works with me. You know what I mean? Um. But yeah, I, I had Wishbone on the show. A shout out to Kane, man. Uh, Kane invited me to come to this concert. He introduced me to this guy named Aaron. Aaron, Aaron and Kane introduced me to Wishbone. <clears throat> uh, I interviewed Kane, and he thought it was professional. He's like, you know what? That was really cool. You want me to go get him? You got, you got four questions. And dude, my shit was fucking like everything was fucking up. Everything was my wires were fucking up. My camera was fucking up. Uh, I, you know what? Fuck it. Hey, da, 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 da. just off the top of the head, and it worked. It worked. Uh, I wish I wouldn't have fucking told him I had hundred thousand subscribers or whatever the fuck I said. But <laughs> you know, you live and you learn. You know, the more you interview, the better you get you, right. So, 
Exactly. That's one thing I love about your interviews. Like you conduct interviews actually really good. Like a lot of people don't re think, think it's a very easy thing, but it's not. <laughs> it is not. It's not. Um, it's like it's like what Alex Jaffe told me. He's a comedian. He, if you, you saw him at the gathering, some of you, uh -huh. um, you got three seconds. You got, the attention span of somebody is three seconds of your average person. You got three seconds to keep their attention or lose it. What are you going to do? Uh, are you going to have dead air time? Or are you going to talk and have conversations and have blah, blah, blah. The thing about interviews, right? Especially in today's day and age, most people's attention span is a lot shorter. So a lot like, like what's his name? Howard Stern is known as a legendary interviewer. But her, his interviews are usually very long, right? Uh -huh. That worked back in the 90s. And yeah. early and 2000s but it's 2024 and people aren't really feeling those long ass interviews so yeah i still make a 30 minute interview but i cut it up and i put the music in between and cuts and clips and commercials and fun shit or you know whatever ads of other people i make it a more fun show yeah it's still an hour long show but you, a lot of people tell me they don't even realize it's an hour long i don't know that's you one thing i love about it. And that's one thing I love about your show too, is you're like your literally own production team too. Yeah, dude. Um, I mean, I literally, I, I, I never went to college or anything for none of this. I don't, uh, I, I taught myself or other, you know, watching other people um, mm -hmm. and, or watching videos on the internet. I just figured it out. And um, I, I mean, I've literally been on television with this. The show has been on Roku, Fire Stick, Apple TV. Shout out to Signature Series Network. Cody Minutes in Tears of a Clown. T tears of a Clown. I don't know why I sound like that. Let's go. <laughs> Look, I'm slowly drowning, I can't reach the surface. Despite my imperfections, you expect me to be perfect I sacrificed it all and never questioned if it's worth it I guess I'm just a clown who got swallowed by the circus You couldn't purchase half the game that I've soaked up When I look you in your face, it's hard not to choke up I made a move on my own, was sick of being broke, bruh I've been fighting snakes so long, it turned me to a cobra I'm still a loner in this room full of people Because behind every plastic smile still hides a little evil her tears falling like the drips out a needle She said you're never here when I need you I wish I didn't always have to leave you And I really meant to call you back Sometimes I get lost in the sauce And can I recall where I'm at? All this alcohol and chemicals is really just a trap I paint a picture of my struggle But they still can't picture that I'm sick of depression I'm sick of the pain It's taking its toll on my brain So much aggression with nowhere to aim I need to release all this rage So much temptation, it's hard to maintain That's why I still can't feel my face Can't hide from attention, can't run from the fame yeah. I gave up Love. my life for the game I live a fast life with no signs of slowing down I hope when it's all said and done You're still around to hold me down I've been going state to state, city to city Town to town, it's getting hard to think With all the smoke around all I see is fake smiles saying they're proud of me now All most of them really wanting something out of me now You better not come around if you're striving for clout I'll probably end up smacking fire out the side of your mouth People think my life's great like I'm just partying now They don't know when I leave my house it kills a part of me now You can stab me in the heart and rip my arteries out Just let me fucking bleed until I fall on the ground Yeah, maybe then I'll finally be at peace but I highly doubt it cause I've given up everything just to chase a dream There's no time for sleep when it's time to feed the beast There's no rest for the wicked and money doesn't grow on trees I'm sick of depression, I'm sick of the pain It's taking its toll on my brain So much aggression with nowhere to aim I need to release all this rage So much temptation, it's hard to maintain that's why I still can't feel my face Can't hide from attention, can't run from the fame I gave up my life for the game All this alcohol and chemicals is really just a trap
on trees. I like that shit. I give that shit a straight nine. You know what I'm saying? Let's get some more of this interview. Let's go. Now shut up, bitch. I'm fucking painting your face whether you like it or not. What's one message you'd like to give to your fans? Um, just fucking do what you want to do. Um, fucking don't be afraid to express the things you really like, even if it's something that's completely what you think would be weird to other people. Just the weirder it is, probably the more better and more organic it is. Just uh, don't be afraid to fucking, you know, express your true interests. I like that. That's dope, man. What's your most useless talent? Favorite my question on the show. This, this is this is the fans' favorite question, bro. No, the most my most you, you, uh, my most useless talent. Um, I would say sewing, but actually, it's not useless because like it's productive and it actually like it's starting to be like lucrative. But like, uh, yeah. And by the way, I want I want a hat, man. I need a, a custom made sicko. You need to get my hell hat. yeah. I would say, I don't know, cracking my bones. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, um, do you got any of your necklaces you make laying around you? Uh, yeah, I got some charms. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, these are uh, my company's called Chain Gang. Um, I didn't invent this style artwork. It's something that's been around fucking for at least 10 to 15 years. It's, uh, it's just, I, it's basically a tattoo. Like, any design you want, I can do. Um, it comes on a chain when you get it. So, you know what I'm saying? What's it's it made out of? Uh, it's made out of a certain type of clay. I hand paint them, hand sculpt them. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. The, the shine is glitter, but it's sealed to where it doesn't leave glitter all over you. So, your, your chick's not going to think you've been at the strip club or something wearing my right. shit. So, you know? uh, what's one what's one re usually run somebody? Um. Right now, like back when I was doing that full time, I was doing it for fifty dollars, which is way cheaper than anywhere else. But with my time and shit now, um, like these ones, when I do tri flag brand ones, I do them for seventy five plus shipping. But custom start at a hundred bucks. Yeah, that's not bad, bro. Uh, yeah, probably in the future I'll get one off you. Those are dope. I like that shit. Uh, but I def I definitely want a hat. So as soon as you can, get to work on that shit because I'll, I'll yeah, definitely yeah. buy that shit. Uh, yeah. What would you be doing right now if it wasn't for music? Probably in prison, dog. I thought you were going to say real, dead. Prison or dead. Like, I've had a lot of near-death experiences, bro. But, like, um, there's been, a, like, the universe has given me a lot of signs, bro. And, like, I even came up with Tripe Life when I was in prison. Like, I was like, I knew when I got out, I had to have some type of brand and this and that. Like, I sat there on my prison rack and just fucking manifested all this shit. But it's like, there's been a lot of times where, like, the things that I got caught and went to prison for are nowhere near as bad as some of the things I've done. So even though I was mad that I was in prison, I was very thankful that it wasn't for some of the other shit that I've done in my life. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to go deep on that. But, uh, you know, there's been times where I come home from prison and have, like, a big music opportunity going on that I would go back to doing some dumb shit and get put back in prison and miss that opportunity to where, like, I've really learned, like, you know, I've – I've already had my two strikes from the universe. I've been I've, I missed out on two major opportunities by going to prison, like music opportunities to where it's like I've learned that it's like I gotta stay in the crib, keep my feet up, you know, do what I'm supposed to do, you know. Yeah. Uh, I could relate, bro. Uh, definitely, I've done some time and shit. I'm also grateful for my time. Um, when I went in, the heroin epidemic started, and I'm from a small town. And I'm in Ohio. You know how it is. Every single one of my friends that I grew up with, just about, I'd say 80% 80, 80 of them ended up fucked up on the shit. And they yeah, I'm, I'm not, you know? Yeah, I'm blessed to say that I've never had, like, an opiate addiction, but, like, I don't look down on it whatsoever. Right. I've been addicted to other substances, like, mostly party drugs, like, ecstasy, MDMA and shit was, like, you know, my favorite shit. Um, I remember when the epidemic first started happening, I knew a kid that was selling perks. And I called it out. I was like, these kids are all going to turn to heroin addicts because the one day um, his plug didn't come through and he didn't want to lose his lick. So he had people just sitting at his house. And, like, there's these kids I all went to high school with, and they're all sitting there throwing up dope sick. And this kid's in there stressing because his plug ain't coming through. 
And I was like, I turned to my homie. I said, bro, I hate to say it, but if we had some fucking, some dope right now, we'd make a killing. Yeah. And sure enough, but within the next year, all the kids was doing dope. That's fucking sad, bro. Sad shit. I've lost a lot yeah, of friends, I've, bro. I've lost a lot of friends. Look, like I said, it's not a joke. I'm not, I'm not trying to make fun of that shit whatsoever, bro. Like, that shit's terrible, bro. And uh, it affects a lot of people, even not just the user. It affects a lot of the people in their lives, you know? No, I don't, I don't. I don't really make fun of anybody that does it or, or talk down on anybody that does it, but I definitely speak against it in my music. Uh, fuck that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for most definitely. <laughs> out, of, out of all the places you have performed, what is your favorite and least favorite venues? Shit on one. Most of them don't exist since COVID anyways. What's my favorite venue you're asking? Venue and shitty one. Yeah. Oh um, my. Like what's the shittiest or what's my favorite shitty venue? Both. <laughs> All right, my, my favorite venue um that I've performed at I mean Legend Valley was lit where the gathering is. I mean that's definitely like a milestone in an underground rapper's career, but like actual venue theater. Um uh the Sunshine Theater in Albuquerque was fire. Um the one in uh Mesa or Mesa, Arizona. What the fuck is that one called? Um I'm gonna butcher it. I can't fucking think of it right now. Um, the Roxy Theater in Denver's fire. Um, I've only wanted to perform there. Yeah, my favorite shitty venue was a place called Shadows, and I'm not trying to shit on it. It was a sports bar that I helped turn into a venue. And at, at first, other venues in the city was hating on it and shit, but eventually turned into like the underground hub. Like you know, because a lot of the venues quit booking. Like underground shit to where the same people that was talking shit about it was later tucking their tail asking how much it is to rent it out but uh i, I put my heart and soul into that fucking place you know she uh, uh the owner she ended up selling it um but i had a number of great experiences it was a great bar but you know for a long time we didn't have a stage i was i i got the nickname jackie moon there you ever seen semi-pro uh, i don't know will ferrell's on the basketball team but he's like the star, oh, okay. star yeah. player He's the coach. He's the team owner. He's the halftime talent, and he's the hot dog vendor. Yeah. Like, bro, I, I was the sound man, the host, the headliner, like the promoter. Like, you know, so like, hey, that's, dude, that that's a cool ass story. Look where you're at now, dude. You're definitely a few notches above me. What in in most areas of music, dude. It's it's fucking cool you're... to see. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I'm proud of you. Like you, you're inspiring in a lot of ways. To see Appreciate somebody go, that. to see somebody go from prison to trying your best to be positive, like we started yeah. this off you because you were talking about some drama shit on the other show. But if you go and you guys watch that show with the dead guy, uh, he he said fuck some drama. I I liked that interview a lot. You, I really suggest if you haven't seen that, go watch it. Uh, yeah, man, and, and just that that whole thing was just basically, um, it's a lot of negative things that have been casted upon me over this past year that I never spoke about. And it's like, it's one thing when I, when I make a status or a post, everyone says I'm just bitching, but it's like, you know, I like to be able to freely speak about it on a platform that's neutral, that has people that are there to talk shit about me. And there's people there that support me. So it's like, I feel like having a neutral, like a platform to speak on it was a good place to speak my mind. You know, you got to remember that a lot of those people that are hating on you, bro, they uh, wish they were in your shoes. You most definitely. I that, definitely understand. That's most most of those people were too scared to chase their dreams and they don't have what it takes to do things like what we're doing right now. You know what I'm saying? What's or, the best or they to share this or they share the same dream, but they got caught up in that box and yeah. don't know how to get out of it. Facts. Uh I find it to uh, I find a lot of my haters to be old, bitter, 40, 50 year old juggalos that rapped back in the day. And I want oh, to yeah. tell I, I want to tell you. I want to tell you about a quote that was uh, that I like to use a lot. That you, because I'm um, back to the topic that you were talking about putting yourself in the box. There's a quote that was put on this show by Tally Demon. Do you remember her? Tally I Demon. Think, I think the name is familiar. Uh, I mean, this is back in the day, bro. Go watch the past episode with her when you get time. Um, reach for the stars. Don't reach for the circus tent. That's some real shit. Real, real talk. That was the mistake she made. You know. Oh yeah. Um, what's the most trouble you've ever gotten into? You could take that question financially, 
uh, physically with your mama, with the grandmama, with the fucking police, how with the juggalos, however the fuck um, you take it. <laughs> getting so caught up in my own fucking ego and drug field fucking madness that I fucking I'm happily in a relationship right now, so I'm not taking anything away from that, you know, but uh I, you know, fucking I cheated on my baby mama multiple times and it's not that I feel bad. I mean like it sucks what I did, but I feel bad for my kids, you know. Um I'm still in my kids' life, you know what I'm saying? I love my kids to death they love me. Um it's just, you know, I've I've I feel bad for some of the shit that they had to go through and witness, you know. Um but I relate, I relate. You know, so I mean, but everything happens for a reason, bro. You know, like I like like I I want to say I regret it, but I don't regret it because the reason I don't regret it is because whether I understand the reason or not, it, it happened for a reason. And, um, you know, life is going to change. It's not always what you think it's going to be. And there might be some things that you that you fucked up that you hold on to, but you don't realize that there's something around the corner that's a blessing. So, like. You know, like I'm in a really good relationship right now and I'm really happy right now. My kids are happy. Um, so, that, I mean, that's that's better than being in prison, you know what I'm saying? And trying to talk to my kids through a fucking a pay phone, you know what I mean? So, um, but that's one thing. And another thing, just, just not taking like, I don't want to just say school, but like not, like I fucked around. I, I feel like, I did so much dumb shit growing up that it took me to being in my thirties to start fucking living a regular, like an actual like life, you know, like I was so caught up just like in the, in the web of just like doing dumb shit to where, you know, like I said, it made me who I am, but you know, like I feel like I wasted a lot of my life in the wrong situations, you know? <clears throat> well, you're in, I think you're on the right path right now. Um, Five months sober, that's that's something to be proud of. I'm eight days clean of no alcohol myself. Uh, Good I've shit, been, man. Yeah, I've been struggling take, with alcohol all my life. Take so. it a day at a time, bro. Yeah. You uh, can't you take know, it a long road. You got to take it a day at a time. But what's what's saving me, I think, is this this podcast and the recognition that, I'm fi that I've worked so hard to finally get, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I, I put myself in that box for 20 something years, you know? Yeah. And when I went after the gong show, and once I saw that the clowns, you know, I mean, Violet J gave me a nine, and Shaggy gave me a six on my music, and that's that's a hell of a score to me, you know, but nothing really happened after that. So I started, I started looking elsewhere, and a lot of things have happened. And now I've worked with a lot of, you know, people that inspire me, and like yourself, you know, and, uh, it's an honor, man. Thank you for getting on the show. Um, tell us, tell us what's the best advice you've ever been given, and tell us what's next for you. The best advice I've ever been given, um, it's it sounds cliche as fuck, but don't give a fuck about people's opinions. You know, um, don't don't just don't try to do things because you think that's what people want. You know, just do what feels natural to you, um, whether it's a certain topic or a style or – because I'm speaking musically because that's what I do. But, like, um, don't be afraid to fucking – to be different, bro. Like, that's – you know, and then one thing, you know, over this past, like, year or two, a lot of people have just been telling me, bro, like, you know, just keep doing what you're doing, like, regardless of the negativity, bro. Like, you know, don't – they don't worry about the other shit. Like, you know, you got – like, people always tell me, bro, you got it, bro. You're going to be there. Like, I believe in myself, but it's really refreshing that random strangers are like, bro, I, I know it. you're going to be huge, bro. Like, you know, it means a lot to me because I believe that myself. But there's been times where I've been super depressed super down and then i might get a random message from a stranger about how my song helped them get through a suicidal situation or something and it's like it makes me like whoa that's what's kept me going with 15 fans for 20 years dude like you know what i mean yeah um, 
for real. I've had those comments too. It's a hell of a feeling and it's a big responsibility. Don't let them down. You know, it's my advice, bro. Yeah. I appreciate you for getting on the show. Most definitely, bro. You know, another really good book. Actually, I just let out a cartoon with Killer C. Remember Killer C? I do. Okay. Born into this life of sin. And I promise my father I wouldn't do it again. But here I am. Stuck in the middle. My heart's with the Lord, but my body's with the devil. Uh, a message to God. It's got me, Killer C, and Zuko on it. Killer C wrote a book called From the Thumbprints of God in the Life of a Criminal. Interesting. Uh, yeah, bro. Uh, I'm proud of Killer C, man. He became a teacher and all kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, and he used to rap about crazy shit back in the day. You got to read his book, man. Like, he told this story. A lot of people don't know why he quit. Read his book. If you really want to know, like, it's not really my place to tell you, but it's in a book. So I'll tell you my version of what I read, right? Uh, it's been a couple years since I read the book, but he told this story about how this girl came up and... She was like cutting herself, right? Mm -hmm. And like showed it to him. And her brother was like agging her on, like, yeah, look, look what my sister did. Yeah. Talking about they got plans to kill themselves or some shit. And he's, what the fuck? Um, you know, like, and they thought that he would like, like that shit because of the music he was making. And at the time, before I read that book, I was making the same type. I mean, look at my logo, bro. You can't tell me that that's not based off of Killer C. Exactly. You know, I pay homage where homage is due. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't know. It made me change my music up a little bit because I don't want I don't I don't want to influence that kind of shit. You know what I mean? Right. He's always had like good bars even when he would like rap about like serious shit like it's the stuff him and like liquid assassin would do is grave plot Ooh. yeah i still got the cd on that shelf over there yeah in my opinion that's a very <laughs> underrated strange music release i don't think it's i mean it's underrated but i don't think it's as underrated as you think those those men still this day have a cult following bro like uh you wouldn't believe how many people hit me up just because i interviewed them you know what I mean? Just because of the interview, not even the song. Uh, I plan on working with Liquid Assassin, hopefully really soon. Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy, Cole Hill. This is my book, From Crime to Christ. Read it. Mm-hmm. This is my newest song, man. Uh, it's called My Dad. Check it out. I haven't played it on the show yet. This is one of those tracks where you gotta listen to the whole thing to understand what I'm saying. Took me a long time to write this one. A few days. Pops is to you. He was a man of a different color than me. Than me. So I was confused. What about Steve, mom? And who the hell's this dude? I grew up without my father, so it made me rebellious My mom had some boyfriends and I always felt selfish She just tried to be happy with two badass kids Really I felt some regret for the things that I did When she wasn't around, I was always mean to these dudes I was do everything I could to make them feel my abuse I'd ask mom why she's crying She said because of a friend I always knew that she was lying She said that lines are sin It turns out he broke her heart And he blames it on me I bet one day, your son, he'll see the penitentiary I'll tell you they were right, but it wasn't mom's fault I had open wounds, my real father poured salt I only met him once, a coward at best They'll say he never was a man when they lay him to rest Pops, he came into my life, I was younger than 11 I remember that day like it was yesterday I was playing Sonic on my Sega I took a break and rode my bike to the woods That's when Juan pulled up, long hair and a wife beater That man became my teacher he Became the father I never had, and I'll say that now Pops, you are the man and you make me proud I'm gonna talk about the past cause I need to let it out I hope you listen close and don't turn this down You whip my mama's ass and that made me wanna kill you Put a bullet through your head and watch it go through your pillow What made me not do it is my mother would beg me She had me in these programs and the truth is they helped me The truth is not really it helped you Cause without that no telling what I'd do I forgive you for it 
but it's because she does And I'll never forget that day that you put on those gloves You let me punch you in your face more than a couple of times I don't apologize if you don't like my rhyme Cause that shit pissed me off and I will never forget it And if you do it again, bet your ass gon' regret it I give you mad props, you get recognition You stepped in for a bitch of a band that was missing I never knew my real father, your only father I had You made one big mistake, but I still love you, you're my dad she was working at Mayhew's, a waitress at a restaurant I don't know many grown dudes that can work as hard as her, no front The mother dudes that came around, that came around took advantage Took advantage, then vanished, right up off this planet Where did they go? 28 years later Mom and Juan are still together, married and chasing paper Pops, you earned my respect, I hope I earned yours I look up to, love, respect and adore You, you. you're my dad the only dad I ever had, fucked up past, let's get the bag. You, you, you're my dad. The only dad I ever had, fucked up past, let's get a bag. You, you, don't be mad. I love you, I forgive you, I hope you forgive me. You, you, you're my dad. The only dad I ever had, fucked up past, let's get a bag. We got a little flip. Let's go. Oh, yeah. I'm the realest to do this. I'm a G in these streets, and you're sweeter than cool whip. I'm a scholar to the game, I'm most of your clueless. Crossing me, that would be foolish. Cause I'm a beast, I'm a dog. I'm a problem. I'm a sicko. I'm a sicko in these streets, I'm a boss. I got him. Sicko, we and team nice one. Yo, what's happening, y'all? This is Wishbone, both of us are motherfucking harmless. Man, you already know what it is, man. Red guy right, Chucky. This is a big cherry bear. You already know what it is, man. This is nonsense. Yo, this is Jay Bazaar. And you're watching this just music. Yo, it's your boy Ashby, the king of Cleveland. This is down the grind. What's up? You got Razor Ray and Motown Rage, Rising Up Angry, Insane Clown Posse. It's crazy, crazy rock and roll for show. AKA Dog Genius. You're watching It's Just Music with Sicko ENT. Yo, it's Hair Trigger. And it's just music. Hey, what's up? I'm Tom Putnam. I'm one of the directors of the ICP documentary, The United States of Insanity. It's like, this is Rocky Rob. AKA Chris Nonsense. AKA Nonsense is Dual Genius. And you're watching It's Just Music with Sick Girl Entertainment. If you ain't on it, get on it. Don't be a dumb motherfucker. It's just music. And you know when I'm vibing, when I'm vibing out, man, you know I gotta watch. When I'm really watching these interviews and these podcasts, man, you know, man, it's just music with Sicko Entertainment, man. That's what I'm paying attention to. And you're listening to It's Just Music with Sicko ENT. It's AKA. Nah, I'm just playing. You already know what it is, man. Listen, we are listening to, and of course, freaking watching It's Just Music with Sicko ENT. With Sicko ENT. Bang, 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 bang. Guys, this is Waycast. It's Just Music, and you're watching Sicko ENT with Signature Series Network. With Sicko ENT on the Signature Series Network. Hey, it's Alex Jaffe, and you're watching It's Just Music with Sicko ENT. You're watching It's Just Music with Sicko ENT. Tap in. What's cracking, everybody? It's your boy Bobby Mars. You are in tune with It's Just Music with Sicko ENT. What's going on, y'all? AC Killer in the building. Fire all the heat, man. You already know, man. We're turning up, man. Very rich entertainment. Harmony House. Yo, this is Diesel Water. And you watching It's Just Music with Sicko Entertainment. Then in Miles Productions, you watching It's Just Music with Sicko ENT. Hey, yay, stay motherfucking Denny. What's up, y'all? It's Jimmy the Gunner, man. And y'all tuned in with It's Just Music with Sicko ENT. Sunny Black. It's Just Music with Sicko Entertainment. My homeboy. All love, cuz. Hey, yo, what up? It's Rap God. Let's do it. It's your boy, Tony Man. Oh, it's your loud boy, and you're watching It's Just Music with Sicko ENT. Watch it or die. He's like a track meet. Legend in the game, bro. You need to pay homage. I catch one out of nowhere to the head like Bonnie. I rock it like Eric Gordon. I'm bouncy like Barry Gordon. I lock in and tell your organs in alphanumeric order. I drop it like Randy Orton. Try me and I'll Alright, sickos. Zuka here. Time to cut the bullshit. It's time for It's Just Music with LB Sickney. Now I know something technical's gonna go wrong during this video. Just about every episode has a fuck up. And if you can catch it, write it down in the comments. Enjoy the show. Whoop whoop!